Well, hello, and welcome to our final lecture, content for the week seven of ORGL 5005, Leadership and Organizations. Our focus this week, uh, this final week, is synthesis, pulling together everything we have learned into a meaningful whole. Instead of just doing a recap of the past six weeks, I decided to give you an umbrella concept that may help you make sense of some of the complex situations you will undoubtedly face and maybe provide some guidance on how to navigate through them. I call this lecture Understanding Error and Risk. At some point in your academic life, you will likely take a statistics course. And if you are fortunate, like I was, to, uh, you will have a professor who is both deeply knowledgeable about the subject and very willing to give completely understandable explanations of the tools. Well, unfortunately, I'm not that professor, but I did come to understand that statistical analysis is not about certainty, but probability. And when applied to business, probability is all about errors and risks versus opportunities and rewards. Let's take a closer look. We need to start with an understanding of error. Not the clear-cut error of misspelling a word or saying that 2 plus 2 equals 5, but rather the errors of probability that come up when examining concept, complex situations with many factors interacting with one another. What we hear, have here are some uh, definitions of error. Basically, errors fall into one or two categories or types. Type one or so-called alpha errors are what we call false positives. We are accepting something in true, as true when it is not. Sometimes this results from <clears throat> excess credulity, too much belief or too much enthusiasm. Uh, an example being relying upon buying lottery tickets to fund your retirement. Sometimes it uh, results from what is called poor specificity, essentially asking the wrong question, which results in the wrong answer. It's an invalid answer. Conversely, type two, or what we call beta errors, are what we would call false negatives, rejecting the actual truth of something. Sometimes it results from excess skepticism, an example might be insisting that the earth is flat. Sometimes it results from what we call spore sensitivity. Asking the right question, but in a way that results in an incorrect or undecipherable answer. An example might be the old, do you still beat your spouse joke, where no matter how you answer yes or no, you are guilty. So what does that actually mean in our business dealings? Well, the question then becomes one of risk. What are the consequences if we make a wrong decision? When working with a financial advisor to decide how to invest for retirement, one question that is always asked is the re investor's risk tolerance. How comfortable are they with the risks typically associated with higher investment returns? A highly risk tolerant investor is more likely to, be, to be comfortable putting their money into startups, innovative projects, products, emerging markets, or things like junk bonds or penny stocks, because they are willing to accept the risk of loss in exchange for the high returns that can result. By contrast, the risk intolerant investor has little confidence in those kinds of investments and would likely lose sleep if they were so invested. They prefer lower risk, more guaranteed returns, even if they miss out on growth, market growth, and maybe even do not even keep up with inflation. Consider the four examples that we have listed here. The classic false positive, false negative dichotomy is the early pregnancy test. Every time I have asked this question, the preference is always for the false positive. When the EPT comes in positive, the first thing the woman does is see a doctor to validate the results and begin whatever prenatal regimen is appropriate. 
the last thing the woman wants is to be actually be pregnant when the test says otherwise. Conversely, my students see the com dichotomy completely reversed when the guilty versus innocent question is asked. We all know that as a founding principle of U.S. jurisprudence is innocent until proven guilty. We can all think of famous cases where the jury decided that while the evidence presented indicated that the accused person might have actually committed the murder, they did not establish, quote, guilt beyond a reasonable doubt, unquote. We do not want innocent people languishing in jail and would therefore rather have a guilty person go free. In this case, the false negative is the preferred error. And that is the whole point of this lecture. When making hard decisions in a complex situ uh, situation, we always want to be right, but given the actuality, which kind of error is actually worse? Well, that's about it for this lecture and for this course. Why don't you see the next slide for some final notes? Well, we are almost finished. And I know, just like all our little grad students in the picture, you will sadly miss on all the great times we've had together this semester. I know I will. But just don't forget those final deadlines. Best wishes to everybody for academic, professional, and personal success. Bye.